Welcome to the Love and Sex Today Show with Dr. Doug Weiss. Doug has been healing hearts and relationships for decades. He's helped thousands of people release the shame and the guilt, restoring hope, helping people get free from addictions to enjoy a better sex and love life. Here he is, your host, Dr. Doug Weiss. Welcome to Love and Sex Today. I'm Dr. Doug Weiss, and I'm a psychologist and uh, executive director of Heart Heart Counseling Center in Colorado Springs. I will be your host for now our 10th conversation. Our topic today is going to be, am I addicted? Now, you may want to think about, you know, your uncle and aunt or friends or coworkers, you know, and you know, hey, they got a problem. I wonder if they're addicted. Well, that's a wonderful question to ask. But today, let's find out if you're addicted. If you got something going on that you seem like, hey, I just can't seem to break free. Am I addicted? I'm going to ask you just some handful of questions today, and you can decide for yourself if you're addicted. Now, as always, I want you to go to loveandsextoday.com. Subscribe there. Write a review in iTunes for us so that many people can find out what's going on and what you think about it. And one of you will be selected from those who write a review for a private conversation with myself, and we will be able to chat and maybe accelerate some area of your life. That would be a lot of fun to get to know you in that way. Also get a free chapter on our webpage. Usually there's a chapter from one of my books that may be a benefit to you. If not to you, maybe someone you know or care about. So you want to do that. Well, today's topic, I want to get right into this. And before we do, let me first share with you, there's no shame. If you're struggling with something, for goodness sakes, this podcast is not about shaming. I am a recovering alcoholic, drug addict, sex addict, porn addict, caffeine, sugar. I get addictions. I really do from a personal level. And I've been helping men and women recover from all kinds of addictions for over the last 30 years. Now, for some of you, you know, you, you were five years old when I started this process. Some of you weren't born yet. 30 years is a long time to see people get free from addictions every single week, seeing life's change, seeing them grow emotionally and morally and spiritually. And, and as moms and dads take the right place in the home again and, and to be able to work and start businesses and to be able to grow and mature into the person they really were created to be. That's what today's show is about. And so if you got an addiction, that's just a roadblock. You know, and that addiction might be there for several legitimate reasons. Maybe you were abandoned. I was abandoned. Okay, maybe you were abused. I've suffered abuse. Maybe you were sexually abused. I was sexually abused. I had legitimate reasons to be addicted as a teenager. Legitimate reasons. Maybe you were raped. Maybe you had an abortion. Maybe you had something happen in your life that caused pain. And maybe you weren't old enough to afford counseling or know that there's other ways of dealing with it. So you, you chose what was right in front of you. For some of you, that was your sexuality. For some of you, that was alcohol. For some of you, that was drugs. For some of you, that was overworking and overcompensating, being perfect. Whatever you chose was probably a legitimate strategy for that time in your life. But addictions will only help you survive. They will not help you live. And as you grow and mature, the requirement to live life becomes greater than just to survive life. And I survived and I lived. Living is amazing. I love being a great husband, a great dad. I love having a great company and, and being able to help people all around the globe. I love actualizing. I love seeing other people actualize. But one of the things I know as a clinician is addictions will limit you. Even if you're brilliant, you won't be as successful because you'll be constantly using time and energy to support your addiction instead of supporting your own living and growing and expanding and maturing and, and being an encouragement to other people. So let me ask you some questions and let's find out if you're addicted. And if you are, you want to get into our next podcast, which we're going to talk about uh, breaking free from the strongholds from addiction. Today, I just want to find out if you are. And if you are, let's take some steps in the right direction on our next podcast so that you can really live a great life. See, on Love and Sex Today, we want you to have a great life. We want you to have a great love. We want you to have great sex. We want you to be encouraging to other people. But if you're addicted, you're going to have a limitation. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and you just kind of tell me in your own mind if these apply to you. So pick the behavior you think you're struggling with. It might be shopping. It might be overeating. It might be overspending. 
It may be hoarding. It may be alcohol. It may be drugs. It may be porn. It may be affairs. It may be sex. It may be prostitutes. I have no idea what's going on in your life, but you do. But these principles apply no matter what the addiction is, substance, or process. So let's walk through this. The first question is efforts to stop. You've tried to stop. So have you tried to stop this behavior? If the answer is yes, just kind of mark a line or put a yes on your little notepad there or something, or just keep track of it on your finger. You know, yes, you have tried to stop. Okay. And for most addicts, we've tried to stop many times. You know, many people I work with, yeah, I've stopped. I've stopped probably about a thousand times, but I keep going back. Well, if that's you and you got the keep going back answer, let's just keep that in mind. Number two, I call it read my lips. This is where you've made some kind of promise to stop but you really weren't able to keep your promise. And let's just walk through that. That promise might be to your spouse. It might be to your children. It might be to your parents. It might be to yourself. It might be to your God. It might be to anybody. Maybe a girlfriend or boyfriend. Yeah, I'll stop doing that. I promise I won't ever do that again. And you weren't able to keep that promise. If that's you, put a yes. If it's not, put a no. And these questions you can ask, and you, you can get a good feel if someone has an addiction. Number three, consequences. There are some kind of consequences, whether those are um, financial, emotional, social. You have a consequence for that. Sometimes it's a DUI. Sometimes it's getting caught. Sometimes it's getting caught by your partner or children or family member. And uh, you have some kind of consequence. Maybe you lose a job. Maybe you lose a promotion. Maybe you lose an opportunity but you've had a consequence of some type because of this behavior, okay? Number four, you keep it going. Even after you had a consequence, you keep using after consequence. So if you keep using or are doing this behavior, even though it's cost you either relationship, time, money, social status, some kind of thing, you kept using after the consequence. If that's you, just put a yes. If it's not, don't worry about it. Number five, you do more and do more. It seems to take more. We call this tolerance in our field to get the same result. You know, if it was pornography, maybe you start off with Playboy, but now you need to get into something really kind of obscure to get a high. Okay, or maybe you have to get into real people or, or some kind of uh, another behavior. If you started with Budweiser, now you're into very strong whiskey. You know, maybe you started with spending $5 and $10, and now, you, now you're on the stock market spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. It takes more and more to get the same effect, okay? So it takes more. And you find yourself doing more. So if it takes more, okay, to get that same high, that's one thing. But then you also find yourself doing more, okay? Doing more is uh, number seven, where you're actually, it's just taking, just it takes more of whatever that substance or process is. That's doing more. And then taking more is a separate one. So doing more, taking more, answer those yes or no. And and taking more to get the same high, that's the tolerance. But you find yourself, if you look at it, you're doing a lot more of this stuff. Maybe you you had a joint once every few months, and now you're having a joint two or three times a day. That's doing more. And taking more means that it takes the same amount to give you the effect. So you can look at both those questions and answer those. Doing more or taking more, both of those. Number seven is taking more time. Look at the amount of time you're having to dedicate in thinking about your addiction and this could even be just a romantic relationship. Some people are addicted to romance, and, and that's fine. But it's taking more time. You, you fantasize about it more. You think about it more. You plan for it more. I remember one guy, you know, he had, a, had to plan these extravagant fishing trips to be able to go to another country to, to act out with prostitutes. That's what he was addicted to. But it took more and more time. I mean, he'd be gone for weeks, and it was crazy, okay? So more and more time. Look at the time you dedicated in thinking about it, the time you look at preoccupying about it, pursuing it, engaging in it, and even recovering afterwards. Look at the amount of time you spend today versus the time you spent years ago. If that time has increased, you want to say yes. Number eight, we call it the blues, but in our field, we call it withdrawals. You get down or you get frustrated or you get not fun to be with if you can't access this. And now for some of you, this is your cell phone. I mean, really. I think Western culture and uh, other cultures are getting addicted to their cell phone. You see people sitting at the table with their kids and they're all four their, on their cell phone. They're talking to each other. That's pathetic. So maybe you're uh, having that going on. All right. 
So you get, you know, if you can't get access to your cell phone or the internet, it's like, oh my gosh, the world's going to end, you know, and you start getting funky and, and irritable. And I can't believe we're out here in the middle of nowhere and, and I can't Facebook somebody. Oh my gosh. And there, I, I think there's a legitimate internet addiction. I think there's a legitimate social media addiction. We have lived without that for thousands of years. And uh, there are people who, if they just put Facebook at the top of these questions, they would find themselves fitting criteria to being addicted. And, and it's somewhat humorous, but for those people who I know people who they got divorced because their, their wife was on Facebook for six, seven hours a day with people she didn't know and wouldn't connect to her husband. Okay. Number nine, decreasing other activities. Now, all this comes out of my book called Recovery for Everyone. And these are kind of, you can find this in the DSM as well, Diagnostic Statistic Manual for Addictions. But this is kind of a, just a real easy way to look at this, decreasing other activities. Because your addiction is taking more and more and more time, you're not working out as much. You're not having time with friends as much. You're not able to engage in the spiritual, social, or political activities you might normally engage in. And you've pulled away so that you can invest more in your addiction. So decreasing other activities would be number nine. Okay, so I want you to look at these nine questions. Let's go, let's go through these again. You've tried to stop. You've made promises to stop. You've had consequences. You kept using after consequences. It, it, you did more and more of whatever that substance or process was. And the next one, it took more to get you the same level of high. It's taking more time. You get kind of withdrawals or blues if you get away from this. And it's also pulling away from other activities. So those nine questions, you know, I want you to look at those and see how many yeses you actually have. Okay, and just go through that. Now, if you have yes more than three times, it's likely that you have an addiction issue to whatever it is you're thinking about. And if you do, that's not the end of the world. It's just, it's just a highlight that, hey, this is how you're medicating. This is how you're dealing with life. This is how you're surviving life. But now it's time to live life. It's time to be free. It's time to have um, better charge of your life so that you're not running around addicted. And for some of you, maybe a friend shared this with you. And, you know, don't be mad at your friend. They love you. They want you to be well. They want you to be healthier. They want you to be stronger. They believe in you. That's why they sent you this podcast. And, but you have to believe in yourself. I know what it's like to be addicted. I know what it's like to be surviving life instead of living life. Living life is so much better than being addicted. You're way more productive, way more creative. I mean, I've written over 40 books at this point and done many other big projects. You can have a fantastic, fulfilling life and relationships. But if you have an addiction, it's going to hinder you. And if you do have an addiction, go to our next podcast, Breaking Free from the Strongholds of Addiction. And we're going to talk to you some of the basic steps you can take to start moving from surviving with an addiction to living life without one. So don't forget to go to loveandsextoday.com. We want you to subscribe, review us on iTunes, and uh, one of you will be selected for a private conversation with myself, and we can maybe help accelerate that. That'll be a priceless, fun conversation. And uh, you have to review us on iTunes to be uh, selected for that. And also get your free chapter on our webpage. There's always a free chapter on our, on our, on our website, Love and Sex Today. And remember, always have great love and great sex today. That's it for our episode of Love and Sex Today with Dr. Doug Weiss. Head on over to loveandsextoday.com and be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes. When you do and you post a review on iTunes, some lucky listener is going to win every single month a private confidential coaching call with Dr. Doug Weiss. Also, feel free to ask any question you like. You can push a button, speak your question, and Dr. Doug will answer your question in a future episode. So be sure to subscribe to the show. Doug's got some great gifts for you, and we will look forward to seeing you next time.